All right, folks, holistically, big government socialism is a failure. And that's the subject of the riff. No matter what she may say, Kamala Harris, a big government socialist, whose alleged economic plan is a classic example of big government socialism. Noteworthy, a TIP Insights poll of 1,488 adults shows that 54% say Kamala Harris's ideas lean toward socialism. Democrats thought 38% uh, of Democrats, 53% of Republicans, 49% of uh, independents. So it's basically across the board. And as I've said many, many times, the tip poll has been scored as the most accurate in recent presidential elections. So, indeed, the subtitle of the article from Tip Insights is, and I'll quote, her holistic socialism exposes deep economic ignorance and total unpreparedness. So, take a listen to Kamala's holistic word salad yesterday in Pittsburgh. You know, home ownership for too many people in our country now is elusive. You know, gone is the day of everyone thinking they could actually live the American dream. And looking holistically at the connection between that and housing. And looking holistically at the incentives to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner. Let us be inspired by what is possible. Let it always inspire us. And let that then inspire us by helping us to be inspired to solve the problems that so many face. All right. Well, it was very holistic. Yesterday, she unveiled her third economic plan in her two-month-long candidacy. It was basically just a repeat of her price controls. $25,000 free money that will boost home prices even more. A $6,000 refundable tax credit for kids that lacks work requirements and will cost over $1 trillion. In fact, her whole package was scored at $2 trillion. Incredible. Plus, of course, repealing the highly successful Trump tax cuts, which, contrary to what Kamala says, actually boosted blue-collar wages, brought down the poverty rate, and produced record-low minority unemployment. Of course, Kamala keeps saying it only benefited the rich, which has been disproven time and time again. Real wages for working folks went up 7.7% under Mr. Trump, but they fell 2.1% under Biden-Harris. The only sort of new policy is uh, $100 billion in new tax credits aimed at favored industry. But here's the thing. Targeted tax credits never work. Better to let folks and businesses just keep their own money they will spend it more wisely than government bureaucrats will. Biden-Harris spent trillions of dollars on targeted tax credits, on subsidies, on grants, and holistically, it came to nothing. Please see the Wall Street Journal editorial, dated September 23rd, 2024, quote, the Biden manufacturing boom that isn't, and the subheading, U.S. industry output has been flat for two years despite huge subsidies. They note spending on construction of new factories has doubled from the subsidies and the uh, very rich tax credits. The misnamed Inflation Reduction Act cost $1.2 trillion. But the ISM Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing declining for two years, right after the IRA and CHIPS Act. Investment in new industrial equipment has been noticeably weaker under Mr. Biden than Mr. Trump. Biden-Harris liked to boast about creating 800,000 new manufacturing jobs, but actually virtually all of them were bounce backs from the pandemic. As Jackie Heinrich noted, under Trump, about 450,000 manufacturing jobs were created. OK, and again, factually, manufacturing job growth has been flat for the last two years, even with all that spending. Meanwhile, key targeted industries like semiconductors, and batteries have experienced significant job losses. Meanwhile, real average weekly wages for manufacturing workers 2.7% lower than in January 2021 when Biden-Harris came to office. This is why state-directed assistance, whether it's spending or tax credits, never works. The free market, however, does work. Donald Trump will lower the corporate tax rate 
across the board from 21% to 15% for domestic producers. But he's not going to tell them how to spend their money or what products or innovations or equipment. That'll be up to them. By the way, Trump would provide 100% full expensing for depreciation write-offs. Harris would end this. Of course, she wants to raise the top corporate rate to 28%, making the U.S. uncompetitive in the global race for business and capital. And she would abolish the 199A deduction, which would destroy the roughly 26 million small businesses who could no longer deduct 20% of their income from taxation. Holistically, this is all insanity. Yes, she worked hand in glove with Joe Biden for nearly four years. And yes, all that really happened was they spent a fortune to bankrupt federal finances and got virtually nothing for it. In terms of the private sector investment, jobs and wages, the private sector has gone nowhere. Oh, and did I forget, the inflation rate in the past three and a half years plus has averaged 5.7% at an annual rate compared to only 1.9% for Mr. Trump. Cumulatively, cost of living went up over 20%, much more for daily consumer essentials. And, of course, the peak rate was 9.1%, the highest in 40 years. So, it's true that radical Federal Reserve tightening has brought inflation down to just under 3% recently. But that's still well above the Fed's 2% target, even at this late date. So, you know what, folks? Holistic big government socialism doesn't work. And you know what else? There's a real capitalist free enterpriser out there who is campaigning to overturn all that holistic stuff. And that's the riff. That's the riff.